In the Old Testament, in the book of Isaiah, in chapter 40, it outlines a story of someone who will be in a desert. That's what it says. Someone in a desert, and he's going to be ordered to cry. Cry. And he'll say, what shall I cry? Okay, that was how they translated it to English. But let me help you, and we'll go back and look at some of the older manuscript, and then consider what Allah said in the Quran, Iqra. Proclaim. Iqra. Recite. Iqra. Ah. Bismi rabbika Allah de khalaq. Khalaq insana min alaq. Recite in the name of your Lord who created the human being from an alaq. Now we come to another part of Revelation in Islam. We have scientific evidence today to confirm what came in the Quran 1400 years ago is still valid today to the extent that many of the things they just discovered in the last couple decades. Dr. Keith Moore, the top embryologist from Canada, Toronto, Canada, when was ex exposed to this in the late 1980s, said, and we have it on videotape, you can see it for yourself. He said, there's no way anybody living at the time of Muhammad salam, could have come up with something like this. He said, this has to be from God or Allah. In his work, Dr. Keith Moore talks about the trimesters mentioned in the Quran. Again, that's something new. But 1400 years ago, that was there. The shape of the human being exactly at the point of conception. Nobody can see that without a microscope, but it's described in the Quran. Going in shape and out of shape, like a chewed lump, mudra, a zygote, mentioning in the Quran the development and the fact that the hearing comes before the sight. How would you know that? Well, they know it today. Hearing comes before sight in the development of the fetus. Womb. Where were you conceived? In a womb, in the uterus. Doesn't sound like it. This sounds, you know, sorry, but what is it called in Arabic? Raham. The plural, Arham. That's what it says, Raham. Now, if you don't know Arabic, you didn't catch that. Because it's from the same word as Allah's name, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. You were conceived inside the mercy place, the place of mercy within your mother. Isn't that beautiful? You're in mercy until you're born. That's Islamic teaching, by the way. And, and it's not just from the phrase, it's the reality, because the Prophet, peace be upon him, said that every child is born as what? As what? On the fitra of al-Islam. In the natural inclination to be submitting and obeying God in peace. Which means what? Islam. And regardless of the parent. Does not matter the religion of the parent? Islam says the child is in the right way with Allah. And if the child dies, he goes immediately to paradise. No problems. Babies die. You don't go to the mother of a baby and say, uh, Sorry, but uh, what religion are you? Uh, your kid went to hell. <laughs> oh, it's not bad enough I lost my kid. You're going to say something like that? Well, something... If you're XYZ religion and somebody else is ABC religion and you ask their clergy, well, what about my kid? Well, it wasn't in our religion. Hmm, going to hell. <laughs> Not funny. Some women have nervous breakdown worrying about their babies. Islam, you don't have anything to worry about because Islam teaches not only did your child go to paradise, your child is asking Allah, asking Allah, asking Allah, Bring my mother to me. Bring my parents to me. Bring my parents to me. Look at this. Is that nice? This helps to reconcile the mother to realize the mother is being actually coaxed into paradise by their child. And the child is in good hands with Allah. Islam teaches that babies are born in innocence. That's common sense. But then what happens? And Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, they will be raised by the parents to become the religion of the parents, whatever it might be. But in some cases, it's not over. In some cases, Allah will revert them back to that original condition. That's why we don't call people who come to Islam converts. We call them reverts.
because they come back to the natural fitra of Islam. There was recently, in the last so many years, a debate which said, is the Bible the word of God? A Muslim and a Christian started debating this thing. I know who the Christian is very well. He said, I'm not expert on the Bible, not a scholar. But that's not my point. I'm not a Christian anymore, I don't care about it. But I do care about the Muslim who's arguing against the Bible. That is really dumb. This is a golden opportunity to open a door instead of slamming it. This is a great chance to put forth what we really believe instead of cutting everybody off and throwing them off the bridge. Well, everybody else is trying to get them to come across the bridge of the bridge of understanding. You start throwing people out in the water. Why? Because when you say anything against the Bible, even though I know he was talking about the English translation, that's not the way to go. Are there things in the Bible today that we as Muslims know to be absolutely true, yes or no? Absolutely. So then if you said it wasn't the Word of God, what did you just say? You negated that that said you have to believe in what came before. So it's not for us ever to say anything bad against the Bible. If somebody wants you to believe in the Bible in English, you say, not until I believe in the Quran in English. We accept the Quran in the original language, you know. I don't know you can bring me the Quran in English. That's, that's nothing. That's not Quran, man. I'm sorry. That's translation of meaning, maybe. But it's going to be weak. How many words did I just prove to you we don't have right yet? And I'm not the expert. Just imagine. So, no, we're not going to accept the English translation of the Bible, of manuscripts that they don't even know what they got anymore. But we're not going to insult it either because there are statements in there that we absolutely believe. And by the way, you get a whole lot more flies with honey than you do with vinegar. Yes or no? And we're together, Christians and Muslims, about half the world's population. Why don't we see how we can sit together and agree on what we can agree on? And then what we don't agree on, let them believe what they want to believe. Well, we'll believe what we want to believe. What about that idea? They're still what? We're, aren't we brothers and sisters? We all came from who? Adam and Eve, yes or no? And Allah told us about that in the Quran, Surah Al-Hujurat, chapter 49, it's very clear. He said very clear, he brought us all from one pair, which is Adam and Eve. And from them he brought forth many tribes and nations and made us different so that we would what? Recognize each other. Ouch. Shaitan is playing games today just like he did back then. And it's an order in the Quran to not argue, but actually present with each other in a nice way, in a way that's better. This is what we've been ordered to do. The last days. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God Almighty, refers to the last days. There's a lot of reference to the last days in the last part of the Quran, coincidentally. Throughout the Quran, you find reference to it. But the last part, you find surahs or chapters dealing exclusively with, with things that are going to be happening in the last days. Al-Qariya, Mal-Qariya, wa ma adraka mal -qariya. That's scary when you start thinking of what he's saying there about this, this stamping or stampeding. And when he says about the earthquakes, What about that? When the earth is shaking with its final earthquakes. So many earthquakes are coming. And the Prophet ﷺ told us about earthquakes. Prophet Muhammad ﷺ, peace be upon him, told us about people being hit with lightning. It will become so common that people might even say to you, anybody from your family been hit with lightning lately? Who from your family recently got hit in the head with lightning? You know, That's going to happen. And it is getting more common. But the Prophet ﷺ predicted that. Lightning. He also predicted that in the desert, now remember, he's making a prediction 1400 years ago about a people who didn't even have buildings. They're called nomads. In English, they call them Bedouin. In Arabic, he said when the Bedouin 
The nomads, the tent dwellers, are building huge skyscrapers competing to see who can make theirs the highest. Anybody heard about a place called Damam? Jeddah? Now Mecca? Medina? Riyadh? Anybody been there? I was there a few months ago, again, and every time I go, it's... Oh! The last one I saw in Mecca... Mecca, 77 stories tall. And I'm looking at that going, wow. Last time I was here, you had this one. That was the biggest one. Now it looks like a dwarf. So these are some of the other things that we found about the last days. I'm going to end it now with a, a, just one more little hadith about this. Part of a huge hadith, actually. The Prophet Islam told us in the last days about a Dajjal. Dajjal is who? The false Christ. The false Christ will come. He'll be one-eyed. He'll have a bulb eye that looks like a grape. And he will tell people he is Jesus, the Messiah. And the people, many people will believe him. And what he will show to be hell will actually be paradise. And what he'll show to be paradise will be hell. And anybody who goes to his paradise will be going to hell. But whoever goes to his hell will be going to paradise. And he will cause huge fitna. There's no way to describe fitna in English, but it's a horrible thing that he will blow people's minds away. Another sign of the last days when Jesus, peace be upon him, does come back, the first thing he's going to do is kill that one. The first thing he will do is kill the false Christ. He'll be gone. That'll be the end of him. And many people from the Jews from the Christians, from the Muslims, will recognize Jesus. And they will go to him. From all people. It's not any exclusive thing. It will be whoever wants to believe, they can believe. And then, there will be a victory for the believers over disbelief. And this will be good for a while. There will be real nice peace on the earth for a while. Then when Jesus dies, all of his followers will die at the same time. Then after that, there won't be any chance for anybody to come to the right way anymore. It'll be too late. And the earth will then become very corrupt with the worst of the worst people, and then Allah will destroy all of it. All of it. And then he will have the resurrection and bring the people back, and then the day of judgment will begin. دستورنا القرآن وديننا الإسلام أركانه الجليلة دعائم الفديلة ويا الشهرتان كعين